Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and first off let me start with a quick apology. I am sorry things have been a little slow here as of late. Summer was a bit rough but the good news is, at least for me, summer is over. So we're back to a normal recording schedule so you should start seeing a lot more activity from this channel. So thank you for staying with me, sorry about the delay and let's just jump right back into it. And today we're going to start off by taking a look at Coco's Creator. Now this sounds sound somewhat familiar to you and that's because I actually covered Coco's Creator a while ago. So if you've been following this channel for a while, uh, about a year and a half ago, I looked at Coco's Creator because it was first released. Now this was an early point something beta version. And since then we've seen the most recent release was the 1.6. So uh, Cocos has come a long way. Now first off, let's start with a very quick history lesson of just what the hell Cocos Creator is, because this is a bit confusing. You see, there was a project called Cocos. It was created in Python years and years ago as someone's project. Apparently it's named after a town in Argentina, I believe. Um, Eventually, it was ported to iOS as um, Cocos 2D, very popular library, actually used for making quite a few of the earlier and, well, mid-generation 2D games on the iPhone and various iPad devices. And then it was ported to Cocos 2DX, which is a C++ port of the Objective-C library that came before it. Now, this C++ port, in turn, was ported to various other platforms, including JavaScript slash HTML5. And the original guy, the guy that originally did Cocos 2DX, has since invested his time and talent and effort into Cocos Creator. So in some ways, you can look at Cocos Creator as the future of Cocos 2DX. Now, one thing to be aware of right up front, Cocos 2D, uh, sorry, Cocos Creator is not an open source project. So if you go to their GitHub page, you will see the underlying technology is open source, but the editor that we're about to look at today is not open source. So that's a big hang up for a lot of people. I can understand. And I do apologize. Now, another thing is this is a JavaScript slash type slip slash, I think, coffee script um, game engine for now. However, uh, recently announced about three weeks ago, um, they said some of the major changes behind the scenes at the company behind Cocos, and then they kind of talked about the future direction that the project was going. And among other things, improved documentation, video tutorials, etc., move towards a 3D framework, etc. Uh, they announced that Cocos C++, so Cocos Creator is going to get C++ and Lua language support eventually. And you'll go back to the GitHub page, you will notice that actual Creator Lua is already a project in place there. So eventually you are going to be able to script in Cocos Creator using C++ and Lua if that is your thing. Now if you're interested in getting it, Cocos Creator is available at cocos2d-x.org. Uh, just go ahead and download for either Windows or Mac. Sorry, Linux users, you are currently out of luck. Um, it is completely free. I don't understand where this company is going to make their money. Uh, they have another competing product called SDK Box, which has a bundling of various different popular uh, frameworks in an easy to use manner. Maybe this is where they're gonna make money. I actually don't know. But Coco's Creator is completely free to use, if not open source. Once again, let me reiterate, what we're looking at today is not open source. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into Coco's Creator. Uh, we're not going to go into a huge amount of depth here, but I do want to show you sort of an overview of how the engine works or how the editor works, and you can make your own decisions from there. If you're interested in more after watching this video, do let me know in the comments down below, and perhaps I can do a tutorial series on uh, getting into Cocos Creator. Now, one of the downsides with this project is it is primarily Chinese developers working on it. Uh, they've done a pretty good job of documenting it, but there is a hint of English. Um, so, you know, the English can be a little spotty in the documentation. So perhaps a tutorial series is something that, you know, you know, would be ideal. I have done uh, Cocos 2DX tutorials in the past. Um, so anyways, go ahead. Um, this is your dashboard when you first load it. You can go ahead and create a new project. I'm just using the examples here. Um, I think I've already made a couple of these, so we'll make a new project four. And let it spin away for a few minutes. It's going to take a couple seconds for it to load up. It's because it's creating quite a few projects, as you'll see. Um, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. All right, here we go. Uh, so here is the editor being loaded up um, and we will do a bit of a guided tour. This is kind of starting to become kind of a universal norm. This is a component-based game engine. It seems like everything is component-based now on. So if you've worked for the component-based game engine such as Unity, you will immediately be at home here. Uh, this is right now a 2D only game engine. I guess you should be aware of that. Uh, but let's take a quick look around the interface. Over here, you see your node tree. Your node tree is essentially your scene graph. This is the various where the various entities um, that make up your world exist and those entities in turn contain components, which we will see in a second. So for example, we have a canvas here. 
uh, click Canvas, you will see it has a background entity, a test list, etc. So you'll see background over here is childed, is parented to Canvas, like so. And we come over here, you'll see the various different components that make up background. It is a node. Every single component or every single entity, entity is a node, a node is an entity. We'll keep the language interchangeable here. Uh, so a node contains components, but every node has at least one node called node. And this is basically where your positional information comes in. Um, we'll get back to this in a second. But you also see here, it's a sprite. So it's had the sprite component added to it. We can go ahead and actually create one. See if I got any resources to work with here now. Um, resource textures all right here we go so I can show you right away here's a gold coin so we're gonna go ahead and create a new entity so we can come up here and we can go um, we can create an empty node or we can create a render node with a sprite this is we'll ultimately end up with the same result but I'll show you it from scratch so we'll create an empty node so we have a new node in here and we will call this guy gold coin and bad casing on it but you get the idea so basically you can see it was created at the origin zero zero so let's move this guy over to 300 and 300. Let's see, it was updated position-wise up here. You've got your standard manipulators up here. So you can do rotation and scaling um, and a rec gizmo for doing freestyle sizing and positioning. Um, so now we've got this node, we're gonna go ahead and add a component to it, a render component of type sprite. So you can see everything is a node and the node is a container for various different components. And in this case, we are going to add a sprite component. Like so. So now what we need to do is add a graphic for it. We've got our gold coin like here. We just drag and drop it over and then boom, we now have a gold coin node in our scene. If we want to go ahead and um, control it, we can add a script component to our node. We go ahead and add another component. You'll see down here we've got custom components. And these are all the various different scripts that are available in the scene. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add bullet. It's in here somewhere. Da -da 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 there we go. So you see bullet has a single property with a speed of 100. We click the script here, it's going to filter down to all our various different scripts. Sadly enough, not in any kind of order, so you still have to locate it. Uh, so let's go find our bullet script. Bullet. There we go. So we grab it. Here you can see the simple script over here. Bring that guy up in the editor. So there is a built-in editor. You can see it available right here. Now, ultimately, what they do try to encourage now going forward is Visual Studio Code integration. We can bring it into code. Uh, if you come up here to the developer menu, like so, you can install the API source and Visual Studio Code extensions to make it so you get full IntelliSense completion and you can run and debug your code from um, Visual Studio Code. And I love Visual Studio Code, so I fully support this as their um, primary editing environment. But as you saw earlier, there is also this built-in editor that we can work with. And I believe you get code completion like normal. You get syntax highlighting, you get auto tabbing, etc. But you do get a little bit more Visual Studio Code, including debugger support. Uh, so you can see here a very simple um, code. It's extending cc.class. It's a of type CC component. They exposed a property of type speed with the default value of 100, as you can see right here. So as we saw earlier, when we selected our coin, now that we attach our script, that property is now exposed. Now back to our code quickly, you will see it is implemented by handling various different callbacks at different um, points in time in the life cycle of this particular script. So you can see here, there is a callback for update and it's called every frame through the game loop. Uh, we have an on collision enter in terms of when uh, there's a physics collision with this particular object, that code will be called. And we have an onload function. We'll look at a little bit more advanced example in a moment, but you can see the basics of how scripting works right here. So now that that code is attached, we can go ahead, we can run either in the simulator or directly in the browser. The simulator will go ahead and run that and you'll see there is our code, our coin flying off into space. Now I come back here, we can change that property on the fly, run that again in the simulator, and obviously it goes faster. So that is essentially the basics of how things come together. You'll notice we've got various other nodes in addition to our sprite. And again, if I just created a sprite like so, all it's really doing is creating a node with a sprite component already created for us. And we've also got other objects built out in here. You see we've got a splash sprite, a sprite, text controls, um, a particle system tiled map, which works with the tiled editor, which coincidentally I've done a full tutorial series on if you want to learn more about that guy. Um, and then we've also got some UI controls, a layout control, a button control, canvas control, scroll view, progress bars, 
and what's that last guy, an edit box. You can also download uh, new controls and you can also create your own relatively easily. So this is basically designed to be an extensible engine. Um, you also have kind of up here, project, let me just, you know, uh, where was it? Package manager. So you see here, we can also bring various different pieces and resources in like so. So you can see the console here is a package. Uh, console editor, inspector, key store, node library, package manager, which is ironically this guy itself. Um, so you can see there is a lot of extensibility built in here. We've got a sprite editor, etc. So very um, plug-in friendly, extensible editor framework that we've got going on here. Now you'll notice back when we were um, coding with this guy, uh, so back when we had our gold coin and our script on the go here, this, um, this bullet script right here, that code, that underlying code, was ultimately used in Coco's 2DX engine. And where you're gonna learn about that is through their help file. So you've got two different points of help here. You've got the user manual and the API reference. They're both ultimately web documents. Um, here is the user manual. This is exactly what you think it would be. It is the, you know, broken down in different sections. So you're getting started. You got various different tasks available to you. Uh, we're going back here, for example, if you want to do UI programming, they have, documentation on you know how to use the various different pieces in the UI programming, etc. This is essentially your user manual. Now on top of that, we also have doo -doo -doo, an API reference. API reference is quite solid. So you see here all the various different pieces. So for example, CC dot, you'll see a very consistent namespace going on. This is one of those things that has improved with Coco Studio X. Some of their naming conventions because it was based on a library, based on a library, based on a library, got quite confusing and ugly. They've done a pretty good job of cleaning things up. So here you can see a sprite node in effect. And coincidentally, you don't have to do everything in the editor. You could actually create code um, exactly this way. So you can see here, here is creating a new node, um, adding a sprite component to it and uh, adding it into the scene. So you can see what we just did in the editor, you could do entirely in code using this particular chunk of sample code that they've shown right here. And you got your documentation, etc. Now what you will find at time, um, Chinese characters in here, or again, a little bit Englishy, or sometimes a little bit light. For the, for the most part though, the documentation is quite solid and has what you need. Uh, okay. The editor also has the ability to build for your various different platforms and run on devices. So for example, here I could play it directly on a device. I can do a hot reload of said device. Um, so you can make changes to your scene, etc. You can push out uh, a new copy of it. Uh, we can build right here. And if we come back over here, you will see uh, Cocos Creator Preferences. You can come in here, native develop, and set up all the various different paths to either a custom version of Cocos 2 dx to use, NDK, um, the Android SDK, and AMP, uh, which is the Android build system, or that Java build system. You can set those paths right here, and then you can use it to build um, an Android deployment for you. Um, so that's kind of basically it. Let's quickly look at a slightly more advanced version. So let's get rid of this filter here. Go down to use cases and we'll look at um, Spine Boy. Uh, this is a, uh, nope, don't wanna save. All right, so this is a very simple example showing a spine animation in effect. Let's go ahead and there you can see, I got the windows bar, that is really annoying, go away. All right, so you can see various different spine animations. We're gonna, spine, by the way, is a software from Esoteric Software. It's a 2D IK based animation system. Very cool, I also did a video on it if you wish to check it out. But you can see a spine animation being played in um, runtime. So you can see various different controls going on. So now let's take a look quickly at behind the scenes of what exactly is going on here. So here, your node graph going on. We have spine boy here, which is of type node, an SP skeleton and a control script. So the, basically the control for the spine guy goes off to spine control, which is this script. So let's go and locate it. Again, I really wish this was alphabetical. There we go. Uh, don't save. All right, so here is our very simple script controlling the skeleton and when the various different, so when you know you press the different buttons, we got stop, walk, run, jump, being fired. These are basically just a little bit of code to fire off to switch the different animations. So we head on back over here and we look at our run button. You'll see right here, it has um, a click event defined. What it does is it clicks, it goes, finds the spine boy uh, node, which basically you could wire that up by just dragging that node 
over here and into the target section. And then once it's available, you can see it's got all of those various different JavaScript functions that were available to us wired up. So this is how you can kind of bring all the pieces together. You script your stuff um, out of these component scripts and you can wire and communicate in between them. And at the same time, if we go back and look at that script again, you will see that you can easily get your components like that. So on this SP skeleton component, it's getting a reference to it right here uh, via this.get component, sp.skeleton. So you go on back, we'll take a look at spine boy and you will see sp.skeleton. So that's how you can access the various different components that your script is currently attached to. Um, and it allows you to really reuse scripts. So you can attach a script as long as there's a certain component on said script, it will work on any particular node that has that component attached. So it's very reusable in that manner. Um, and you've got, again, other components that you could add. So here, let's do a really quick example. We're gonna go ahead and add a button. And we're not actually gonna, do, I could do a wire up on it, I'm not going to. We already saw how buttons get wired up, but we'll go ahead and add a sound to it. So we're gonna add a uh, audio source component to it. So now we need a clip, click this, it will filter down our options available. We'll bring in ding, like so. We can, and then ding has it, uh, sorry, the audio source has its various different properties. We'll set it to, uh, play on load and uh, auto loop. So now we go ahead and play because that guy's in the scene and there you can hear we're dinging over and over and over again. Essentially, that's about it. It's about all we're going to cover today. Uh, just the basics of the engine. I don't know if this is something that looks interesting to you. It is an interesting approach. Uh, if you're looking for 2D and um, you know JavaScript behind the scenes, this is definitely an engine to consider checking out. And then, as they had mentioned earlier, this is going to ultimately support C++ scripting uh, for your components directly inside the editor and Lua. So um, right now, it's limited to just the JavaScript slash TypeScript type developers, but soon it will open up to a much broader uh, variety of developers. So if you are looking for a 2D entity based engine, this is definitely one to consider checking out. Unless of course you're a, a Linux developer, in which case, yeah, I wouldn't. So uh, I hope you found that useful. Is this an engine you're interested in seeing more coverage of? Would you like to see some tutorials on it? Or is it something you want to stay the hell away from? I understand that closed source editor part of it is definitely going to be off putting to some. Um, but it definitely has some potential, and this is the future of Cocos 2DX, as far as the Cocos 2DX team has announced. Uh, they are still going to be working on Cocos 2DX for the C++ library underneath it. So if you are a Cocos 2DX developer, um, you know, rejoice. You don't have to embrace this, but this is where they are putting a lot of their attention. So uh, what do you think of Cocos Creator? Does this look interesting to you? Again, this is this something you want to see more coverage of? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And again, I apologize for the long wait uh, between videos, but I am back to full time. Uh, summer is over. Not too many people are happy about that, but I certainly am. Uh, so I can get right back to work and you guys can get more videos from me. <clears throat> if something particular you want to see covered, of course, do let me know that down below as well. And again, all the standard stuff. Uh, if you enjoyed that, you're new here, please do subscribe. We do this kind of stuff all the time, especially now that summer's over. And uh, if you like that, please do hit that like button. All right, guys. See you all later. Goodbye.